Ladies and gentlemen, the session InnoTalk Skylift Heavy Lift Cargo Drone for Inaccessible Terrains will begin now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Simon Wong, CEO of LSCM R&D Center, and I'm your moderator this afternoon. Now, finally, after all the talks of uh, supply chain disruptions, macro environment, we come to one of the most exciting session of today, Inno Talks. And the first speaker I want to introduce is Mr. Tomohiro Fukusawa, CEO of SkyDrive. Fukusawa-san is going to talk to us about his heavy lift cargo drone for inaccessible terrains, and may as well talk about the flying cars that we are all very interested in. So I will let Furukara-san to start first. Hi, Furukara-san. Hi. Please proceed. Thank you very much for your introduction. And hi, thank you very much for this special opportunity. Uh, my name is Tomohiro Fukuzawa. I am the CEO of SkyDrive, a flying car and cargo drone company. I've been to Hong Kong uh, two or three times a year and, uh, before COVID-19, so I'm very missing. I cannot go. But today, I will talk from Japan about a flying car and cargo drone. I will turn on my screen. And, and I was an automobile engineer uh, in the past, but and I thought I want to make a revolution to automobile world. Uh, that's why uh, we started a company, uh, SkyDrive. First of all, let me show you a video about our vision. Find true freedom. A world where everyone can move freely. On land, at sea, in the air. Mankind has always sought that freedom. There's no question the world is progressing. And we're helping take it even further. In fact, we're taking it upwards. What we're pursuing isn't just a dream. It's reality itself. When the world's smallest air mobility vehicle takes to the skies, the world will change forever. No need for roads. No traffic jams. No waiting at lights. There are no flightless penguins there. Flying free, we will be the first penguins in the sky. We will launch a once-in-a-century mobility revolution. The proof that what we were looking for wasn't just a dream. So come on, Beyond Drive, Sky Drive. Thank you. Uh, we started a company three years ago and to develop our own flying car, the head office is located in Tokyo, uh, Japan. Uh, and now we have about 100 employees. Our fundraising has been completed to up to Series B and we have collected uh, $45 million from big Japanese corporations and so on. Our R&D base is in Toyota City in Aichi Prefecture, which is located in the center of Japan between Tokyo and Kyoto. Uh, we have signed co uh, cooperation agreement with Toyota City and the local government lent us uh, their property for flight test in the mountain areas. The base is, is so isolated and we have cell phone signals from only one mobile phone company. But thanks to that, we can conduct a flight test anytime, anywhere, without worrying about neighbors complaining about the noise or safety. This shows you how the flying cars feed into the current transportation system. Now, if we want to take up airplane, we need to get the, the airport first by cars, buses, and trains. And it takes time. However, if we have flying cars, we can use the air for daily transportation just like we use the load every day. And to make it uh, and make it into practical use, 
uh, we are now developing two products. One is a flying car to carry people, and the other one is cargo drone to carry goods. So what is flying car? It is called EVTOL2. EVTOL means electrical, electrical vertical takeoff and landing. And it is aircraft. And it is characterized by electrification, a fully autonomous autopilot and vertical takeoff and landing. Its ability to take off and landing vertically eliminates the necessity of runways. The core technology is the same as that of drones you may already have seen or used before. Thanks to those characteristics, it will reduce uh, time, cost, noise, and infrastructure compared to existing airplanes or helicopters. According to Morgan Stanley Research in 2021, the urban air mobility of flying car global market will grow to 9 trillion US dollars by 2050. It is greater than the current automobile market. No company in the world has already launched EV tools yet, and most of the companies say they will start business between 2023 to 2026. With the improvement of capacity of electricity and social acceptance, the business will grow much larger. Another mission is to drive around in a century mobility revolution. I am pretty sure none of you remember over a hundred years ago, automobiles and airplanes were invented and those means of transportation allowed us to go anywhere we wanted. There has been no revolution for more than a hundred years after that. We saw only improvement uh, here and there. We always have to use loads or rail load to transport people and things from point A to point B. But in the world with flying cars, we don't have to use that kind of infrastructure. So we will not have to invest in any new loads or repairing the rail loads. In addition, we will not have to worry about traffic jam or covered train. If the technology of autonomous driving improves, the mobility gap will be reduced and on-demand mobility will be possible. We are moving forward to make the mobility revolution as a reality. Today, more than 400 EV tolls projects are opening and around the world. But it is said that only 10 companies out of 40, 400 have completed a flight test with a man on board. We are one of the uh, 10 companies. Even though some companies started developing the EV tow aircraft before we started, we are catching up with them by conducting many flight and non-flight tests in a property. We've been constantly improving our aircraft for the last three years. And last year, we completed the first manned flight test in Japan. There are eight motors and eight rotors powered by battery. In case one battery or a rotor fails, the aircraft will continue to fly for safety and stable landing. This aircraft is a prototype and the safety level is lower than that, that kind of existing airplane. So we are now working on improving the safety level of flying cars to get the certification from Japanese government. As well as the aircraft, uh, we are developing business environment our plan is to launch our business at Osaka Kansai Expo in 2025. The basic plan for Osaka Expo, including using flying cars as a means of transportation. In September this year, we have signed a partnership with agreement uh, with Osaka local government. Also, we have partnership uh, with major company in Japan to build a urban mobility ecosystem. Uh, such as energy company or for battery chain solution or construction company for flying car ports or like that. We are also a member of public private council for air mobility revolution. Uh, three years ago, Japanese government formulated this roadmap and declared that they will make rules and regulations to put flying cars into practical use. Now, 
Let's talk about cargo drones. We have started to deliver cargo drones last month. Cargo drones can carry weight up to 30 kilograms. We utilize flight control and safety technology for large aircraft that we developed through making a flying cars. Uh, here are some potential use of cargo drones. Uh, for example, in mountain areas, cargo drone can replace hard and dangerous work such as transportation of materials or equipment to work sites. We are also exploring the use case of cities as well. In this experiment, a drone delivered supplies from the city areas to mountain uh, areas and it reduced transportation costs and time compared to existing transportation system. At the moment, it's cost effective to replace uh, transportation work in mountain areas, and the number of drones increase, the cost will be much lower. In the near future, drones will fly over cities and uh, delivering goods through the sky will become normal. This shows our business milestone to make the world everyone can use the sky for daily transportation. We will start air taxi service in Japan in the mid 2020s. I will show you how the world is going to look like in 2030 in the following movie. ました。東京。東京のオフィスまで。かしこまりました。候補が2カ所あります。外部ノイズをキャンセル。Uh, you may remember the first time you rode bike or automobile and realize how huge the world is or how exciting the transportation is. Uh, when I got the helicopter for the first time, I got so excited about this 3D transportation experience using the sky to go somewhere. It is time to real, really make it into our day, everyday uh, reality. I truly believe that this will make our world a happier and more comfortable place. Thank you for your time. Thank you. This is truly very, very exciting. I, I was smiling all the time when I'm watching it, like I was a 10 year old. <laughs> uh, Fukusama san, uh, nowadays we Chinese love to say dreams. It seems to, you must have started this project with a dream flying cars, flying drones, but what makes you think so? What motivates you to be a revolutionary? Can you share with us? Yeah, uh, from when I was young, I really like electrical goods or automobile or planes like that. And I first entered an automobile company and start making uh, cars, By, but uh, when a uh, smartphone was released and 
Facebook or many application comes, it was truly in, you know, invention or innovation. And I wanted to make innovation too, to a uh, mobility world. That's why I started to talk, you know, think about making air mobility. Let, let's talk about, I read an article when you say Japanese people are reluctant to accept such new things. And you type, if you type Japanese people, new things in your Google search, it will come up with a word called denial. Now, you are running a startup company, you need to convince a lot of customers, investors. How, how do you change their mindset? How, how do you convince that this dream will come true? Yeah. Uh, when I first start this project, before we launched our company, I was very nervous that I can, I say, I will make flying cars because I was nervous. Uh, as some of the people around me said, oh, is it really true? Oh, it's impossible like that. But after I talked with investors or many dreaming people, everybody said, let's go ahead, let's go, go ahead. And I changed my mind to say about my opinion uh, strongly. And after that, everybody started to follow me too. So I changed my mind. <laughs> so th this is really amazing that you can inspire people to support you. But of course, I mean, it is a flying drone or car, but running a business, you cannot leave the ground, so to say. Uh, talking about this kind of new technology, um, how do you plan to promote it into actual uh, commercialization? Now, before you answer, I want to let the audience on the floor know that you can ask questions. And if I see additional cash questions, I will relay to Fukusawa-san. Now, back to my question is that, you have a flying car. You plan to let it fly to help people to stay away from traffic jam. Now this calls for a system to regulate it because once there are say like 50 flying cars in the coming Osaka Expo, how, how do you set up the rules for them to fly? How do you set up the drones from getting into the way of a flying car and so on and so forth? Can you share with us some of the details? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is a very good question. And uh, we as an industry, uh, every year we, be, we are talking what kind of step we will move forward to the uh, movie uh, we showed you uh, beforehand. And at first, uh, flying car would be only uh, less than 100 or 10 or like that. And uh, uh, each uh, flying car should be uh, have uh, enough distance between them so that we don't have to care about class war like that. And little by little, uh, as the number of flying car increase, we have to care about uh, transportation system or uh, see from the uh, no, sky. So, many flying car is moving and uh, before we uh, launch, uh, we have to hand out the flight plan and uh, some controller uh, see it. And uh, uh, sometimes they say, uh, please change the route or please change the time or like that. And it is already done in uh, current flying uh, airplane or helicopter, but uh, maybe, in the near future, the number of flying cars is more than uh, aircraft or helicopters. Uh, we have to change the uh, network or control more precisely. Uh, that is uh, under discussion in NASA or other countries too. I see. Now, because our conference is in uh, logistics, you are simultaneously designing flying car for people and flying drone for logistics, which section you think will come up faster? Flying drone, 
flying goods all over Japan uh, and rest of the world or flying cars getting people. Okay. Um, the safety level of drone and aircraft is very different. Maybe uh, 10,000 times safer than drone aircraft level. So if we can make a uh, flying car as uh, know, aircraft level safety, uh, maybe uh, many people can ride safely uh, because the Cessna and flying car is almost the same safety level. But uh, thinking of drone, uh, it is more you know, less safety. So if drones uh, go above the city, uh, many people may fear about they will uh, drop off to the city inside. So I think uh, for city side, uh, flying car or Ibito might become sooner. And mountain side, uh, we have already used drone. So uh, drone is coming more and more in mountainside or uh, city, uh, no, yeah, local area. Now, uh, maybe one or two more question. Uh, one question that I would like to ask, which is connected to my next guest, is actually you are using electric power, isn't it? Yeah. Now, electric power, immediately, we think it will be cleaner, quieter, but do you need uh, like the EV station to charge up the plane or what's the plan? Will, will there be sharing of those uh, charging stations both for EV and for your flying car? Okay. Uh, generally speaking, uh, we can share the EV station, not only cars, automobile, but also aircraft. But uh, as uh, frequency of both is different from uh, each um, automobile or each EV to flying car, uh, maybe we have to change the settings uh, of uh, charger, I think. So uh, uh, we have to think what kind of uh, vehicle we have to uh, charge before making a charger. And uh, also, there are many types of flying car in the world. Uh, it is it it might be better to that we can change and uh, charge it, every type of EV tow. So uh, there is a, a global uh, flying car port company too, so that uh, they can uh, charge or uh, take off and landings uh, anytime, anywhere by ev every vehicle. This this is actually truly amazing, but. Um... You have the dream and you got the support, this passion shared by the investor and many other people to help out. And then we are, we are actually talking about something uh, that we used to see in the movie. Now, realistically, what do you think it will become truly commercialized and popular uh, in terms of how many years? Are, are we going to say it, see it? within 10 years, or it will take a bit more time than that. Okay, uh, we will launch flying car uh, in 2025, but uh, it is uh, step by step. So uh, like this, uh, when many you know, vehicles uh, around the city, it might be you know, possible in 2030, mid-2030, mid I think. So, and uh, to realize that, we have to secure safety. It's not that far away. This is 20, 21, 20, 30, 35. It is still foreseeable and you are still young. And I look forward to seeing your cars flying all around within 10 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think our time is up. I think people would love to ask questions. Uh, audience on the floor, if you have questions, please send it to us and we will relay it to the speaker. Okay. Yeah. And Thanks please again. Uh, contact SkyDrive if you okay. have it. Yeah. We certainly will. Thanks again. And you'll have a nice day in Japan. Thank you very much. Have a good time. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining the Inner Talks.